Today I will talking about a little bit related to the fishing industry, and I will introduce you at last two kind of different fish. Those species are very special. And uh, at the very beginning, I want to talk a little about the typhoon. I think in the week two or week three, we already explained the Taiwan geography. And I told you, we will have water only because we have a central mountain and we have a typhoon that uh, brings the moisture to Taiwan. But the path of typhoon will highly influence results. Normally, the best situation here is Taiwan, and we will have a central mountain. If the typhoon goes to Taiwan from the east part, it comes here, hits the central mountain, and uh, highly affect the east part people. But typhoon normally will be decreased or disappeared after land hitting the central mountain. And the typhoon will transfer the path to go to the Japan. Here is Japan. After typhoon leaving, it brings the moisture from the south west part. It will be a very good appropriate quantity of raindrops that watering the farm in the west part of Taiwan. Okay, here is the good situation. Typhoon from the east part and the moisture from the south and west part to Taiwan. This time, typhoon goes this way. Hitting Taiwan, hitting the south part, Kanding, Hanchun, a little bit of Pingdong of Taiwan, and then will go to the east and north part, go to Japan. This kind of typhoon already carries a lot of the rain, the moisture here. And once he hit Taiwan from the west part, hitting the central mountain, it leaves a huge rain to the west part, which will destroy the vegetable, the rice farm in the west part. This is a better situation. So many people are thinking about, ah, Taiwan now is lacking of water. But at this time, we, we already have too much water because the surface water will not be able to use. Those water should be, you know, falling in the water dam, and we collect it, and we could deliver it to the, the place we need it. Like this kind of typhoon, it just suddenly gives us too much water, and it caused a huge problem. And this rain, I would think, it will be stored in this afternoon. So, if you want to buy some food, you better finish it before lunch time. And I strongly suggest you to store about two days quantities of your food. Otherwise, you may not have enough food or may not be able to go out. Okay, my suggestion. So do you guys understand the typhoon pass will change, will highly influence the, the situation in Taiwan right now? Do you guys understand that? Okay, so... After that, I want to start the class today. In the CIS virus video, we already mentioned about shark fin yesterday, but we will not focus on shark fin. But I want to explain some theory to you to let you know why we don't eat shark fin. Just, it's not because the, you know, cutting layer, actually the shark fin is like our finger, like our hand and leg. It's not because it's bloodless to cutting their finger, cutting their hands and eating them. But also some kind of zero that proved eating shark fin will cause healthy problem. Okay, so I wanna ask you guys some question. So the first question is, you watching this picture and it gives me the name of this creature, either in Chinese or English. The shape in this picture already directly tell you what kind of a typically creature it is. Ping Liang Anzhu, you're good. Already, already one person, no, it's not great shark, I'm sorry, Jiala. Okay, this is a hammerhand shark. So 
how come you know it's a hammerhead shark? Here is the back fin. It's the fin from the shark back. And this direction is the hand of shark. If you know a little bit, a little bit of concept of the flow mechanical, Liu Ti Li Xue, and you will know the side that directly face to the water will be a curve. Here's a shark fin. This side face the water. Once the shark is swimming to this side, you are hitting the water directly. So water will be flow through the curve. And the fin will be ending like a very sharp angle here. So every time you see this sharp, this kind of shape, the curve part points out the hand direction. So, okay, here goes the hand. You can see here that the shape here, that's like a hammer. So this name is, this, this shark is called a hammer hand shark. Okay, I think you guys already know some information of the giant white shark. Yes, and I think I asked you guys a question before that do you think that the shark will eating people or not, right? Okay, but today I want to focus on the hammerhand shark. And uh, do you know what they eat? So I, I better give you a picture slide clearly shows the hammerhand shark. In Chinese, its name is A Ji Sha. So if you search the picture, and we'll see. They have a, a little bit scary face, right? Their eyes is on the very side, east and right side, very far from the central point. This kind of structure gives them a very good vision because they can watch different angles and highly enlarge their vision. But it also has a shortage. In the central point of their hand, this part, they won't be able to see anything. So they swimming directly go to the front but they won't be able to identify any subject in front of them. That's a weird point, right? But I want to let you guys know the hammerhand shark is highly evolved shark, which means they are much, much better than white giant shark. So, and you can watch they have a mouse, not very large mouse on the bottom of their hand. So anyone could tell me what kind of a food this hammer hand shark eat? Kylo, you are right. They eat octopus. Good, better choice. Yes, they do also eat octopus. Kylo, I want to let you know that the squid, yes, fine, good. And Kylo, I want you to know the fish is the correct answer, but not the fish near top of the ocean. Okay, other sharks too. Yes, Tian Zhong, you are right. They eat other sharks too. Okay, I want to explain the, the detail to the Kai Le. You see, if they want to eat, it, it's his hand, huh? it's hammer hand. And their mouth on the bottom of their hand. If this shark want to eat a fish on the surface of the water, they will have to raise in the hand but still, their head will hit the fish first before their mouth did. So it's not able for them to eat the fish in the surface of the water. They eat the fish in the bottom of the water. Also, the cranes, the octopus, the squids, and the other smaller shark, they also eat them. Yes, but how to catch them, how to, you know, identify that this subject is there. Their middle part in their hand is blind, totally blind. They cannot see anything in the middle, in the central point. So before they opening their mouth to bite some food, how to detect them? 
give me your answer how to detect them how to how this shark detect their food yes Henny, you answer your answer is great most shark biting <laughs> okay later Henny, i want to let you know most of a shark has a great smell abilities but not this kind of shark i, I already told you the, the giant white shark is a very old species they smell things they using their speed to hitting to hunting other fish but ham hand shark not they don't do it they're highly evolved feeling of the water movement no also not not yet anyone to give me the right answer their sensory organ and detect their crates yes jessica good job you know the reason they didn't they empty the central point of their hand is because here they have a organs that was sending the radio moves from their body you may feel strange how could a fish sending a radio actually thinking about your heart your heart beating every time it beats sending a little bit of tiny signal this kind of signal could be a very weak radio waves but hammerhand shark has this kind of a function it's a special function they could enlarge this radio waves and send it out into the water like a sonar under structure called a bit right and once those radio waves sending out other fish they have heartbeat even the the cram the squids have the tiny heartbeat that kind of a signal will be you know reflected and uh you know in 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 termed the original radio waves so they received the signals from other fishes it's heart beating and they know this fish is here and once they're getting closer those fish those creature tiny creature will getting nervous and the little heart beating speed is rising and it's easier for them to detect it so this is the way they eating other fish and now i want to share you a video this video shows a hammerhand shark try to catching a black tail shark black tail shark is smaller much much smaller than the, 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 than the hammerhand shark i think that the black black fin black fin shark will only have a 1.5 meter and they will migrate in uh in, in where is in the mexico mexico bay or what but okay anyway let's watch the video every year on this particular beach we fill the black tip shark migration there's thousands of sharks that migrate here and with those sharks there's monster hammerheads these are giant sharks 14 feet plus in length and these things weigh well over a thousand pounds they feed on the black tip sharks which is so cool this year we captured some amazing shots with our drone of hammerheads hunting black dips check this out you can see how huge is this hammerhand shark compared with human things every black spot in the water is the black thing here black spot black fin on the top of their fin black color
you can see they're chasing it, but they're not able to be directly catch the the, the, the victim. They will try to haunt them several times. Making a circle, keep sending the radio detection. And then finally they will try to bite it, but they have a small mouth to make them not wildly open. They are easier to hunt in the pants. Yet, normally, they It finally got it. We got some really great shots this year. My favorite. Okay, so this is a hammerhand shark. National Geography do have a very amazing videos. Okay. Here you could zoom in the screen and see the different direction. Isn't it funny? Yeah, you can see here is a hammerhand shark. They are they are on the very bottom, bottom, you know, the sea bay. They play here and try to detect the signal and water. Here comes from the yes. Their body type. Else. They have a 60 degrees. He's a nurse shark. They're very kind, they're friendly, they won't bite people. This kind of nurse shark, even touching it, even you hoping it will be Again, very tiny teeth. Okay. And then you're sending a camera on. Diver, you see the camera. Okay, I stop it right now, but enjoy your video. Where you take a human? Normally, shark will not attack human. They eat different kind of species, marine life. But for very old species, like a giant white shark, they may have chance to attack the human. And the reason they attack the human is because they eat sea lion as their food. And you will tell me, what well, teacher, that the sea lion is totally different shape as a human being. How could white giant shark make mistake? Well, there might be some point to tell you that the giant white shark smells the blood. But those people, those sea lions in the water, they won't be bleeding normally. They are healthy, they won't be bleeding. And the, the, the giant white shark will see them, will watch them in the silly location and swimming very fast and open their mouth wildly to biting them. You can see the giant white shark is accidentally, they didn't want to attack human. But you can see this kind of, the, the, the giant white shark you see their mouth is very huge size. And while they swimming very fast, try to crush the victims, their prey, and they will even raise their hand and wildly open their mouth. And it's become this kind of shape. You can see they were raising their hand and opening wildly of their mouths. And they have a night lives of teeth. And every time they're biting the food, some teeth will lose. And from the back, back side, different side, different line of the teeth will go replace the old one. And the newest one in the very inner part will grow. They grow the teeth very fast. And here is the picture. They try to bite a sea lion. Okay, so now why this shark attack human? Here is a human. Human shape that's different from sea lion. 
So once the serving board cover your body and it suddenly becomes your hand and your leg outside of the serving board, the shape will be very similar to a sea lion. Okay, so actually the shark doesn't want to bite you. They want to bite a sea lion. Just your shape is very similar to a sea lion. So they make a mistake. Shala, you're right. They make this mistake. They confused about our shape. And they think we are the sea lion. So they accidentally try to bite us. But once they bite us, we start bleeding. And the test of our blood is different a sea lion. So they get confused. Why? It smells like blood, but I have seen the video that the shark tried to attack the scuba diver in a cage. The reason they try to attack the scuba diver in the cage is because those divers use some blood to attract the shark. They want to take pictures. They want to dive with shark. But once those shark smells of blood, they're getting crazy. They're losing their mind. They see everything is moving and they assume they are food. So they try to attack. Okay, this is the reason. Okay, once the shark biting us, our, our blood goes out. We start bleeding, but the smell is different as sea lion. Shark will also confuse, but they smell the blood. They want to make confirm if you are sea lion or not. So they bite you again. But unfortunately, if you are bited by a white giant shark twice, you probably will have over 70%, 70% rate to death. So accidentally, they don't want to kill human. It's accident. And uh, there is also another interesting story that I record on YouTube. Okay, I'll, I'll... The people on the beach don't have to worry about them. The man saw that the animal was quite large, more than six yards in length. Nevertheless, he felt sorry for the shark and spent some time setting her free from certain death. It's what happened after that you simply cannot imagine. Instead of going away from that unfortunate place as soon as possible, the shark followed her savior. She did not try to attack. She appeared to be accompanying him. Of course, the man was pleasantly surprised by the behavior of the man got in a funny situation. Arnold going fishing on a nothing. As the sharks and the shark emerged from the water, she let him pet her belly and neck. She grunted, turned her eyes, and moved her fins up and down, hitting the water happily, and wags her tail like a happy dog. This is simply amazing. Okay, just because this fisherman saved him, save her as a female, save this shark from the, the fish net. Why we said let the fisherman save this shark from the fish net? I don't know if you watch the video clearly, but I want to see a picture here. You can see actually shark don't have a gale. The gale means they have a connected with the muscle. Like the, you know, you, you know, they could using their brain to raising the gale to create a vacuum space to suck the water into their body and exchange the oxygen. But the shark don't have that kind of muscle. This is only their skin, different layer of skin. You can see they have only different layer. They must keep swimming. So the water will be flow into their mouth and comes out from these gates. And during these courses, the oxygen will exchange here. So if a giant white shark was stopped by a fish net, which means they couldn't swim, there is no water float into his mouth. He will lack of uh, oxygen, okay, and they will die. So this fisherman just cut out the fish net and saved this giant white shark, and this this shark become his friend. So there is an interesting point. If if giant white shark could remember. You treating it good will lay, you know, do some revenge. 
if you hurt men. Scientists can never try to prove this kind of theory, but this video clearly shows us they will remember you. So there do have some stories that tells us the giant white shark designed to attack certain people. Might be just because they remember those people did some bad things to him or to his family. So they try to revenge. Okay, I, I think this kind of a, the story will totally change your opinion about the shark. But what can we use shark not only as a food? Here, we have a biomimic. We have a using some kind of material science and to create the scale. This is the scale of a hammerhead shark. Here is the, um, it, we enlarge it for 275 times bigger. Okay, and here is the shape. You can see it's not a flat surface. It have a tunnel inside. Okay, here is the front, here is the tail. So once the water flows through those tunnel, those tunnel guide the water into a certain direction, which make all the water flow, flow its body very smooth and a very high speed. So I think you, you remember the, the Olympic gold medal winner, Philippus. He is a very good swimmer. And the suit, the swimming suit he wear here, as simulate the shark skin. They create this kind of structure to, to make this uh, swimming suit. So that's interesting. We could use biomimic. Watch this scale again in detail. And you will see this scale is not a very smooth surface. Come on, come on. And you can see there even have more tiny structures on one tiny scale. It's 100 micro millimeter, which means it's only 0 0.1 millimeter, I think. Yeah, very, very tiny scale. And the whole skin of a shark look like this one. They arrange the line side by side, close to each other, create a surface with channel on different side of their body have different direction of turnal let guiding the water flow to the right direction okay and you can see the picture here those scales actually standing up on the skin not very closely covered the skin. Like standing up, they can move to a certain angle, certain direction. When they will try to swim very fast, the scale will be like a flat. But they want to swim slowly, the scale could be slightly rising up. They are standing on the foundation here. And here is the shark skin. This angle here can be digested. It's interesting, right? And I want to tell you a very interesting fact of a hammerhand shark. I think Jia Jing asked me about if the shark attacked the people. I told you they will attack people only by accident. But if you swimming in the ocean, suddenly a hammerhand shark try to attack you. He already detects your heartbeat and he knows you are here. He arms on you and using a high speed to swimming towards you. What you should do to stop it, to stop a hammerhand shark? How? Anyone have an idea how to stop a hammerhand shark attack? How to stop it? Attack its eyes. 
attack its eyes? Yes. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> its eyes on the different side, okay, right? So you want to attack his left eyes or right eyes? Hammer hand shark have a large, large size of hand. It couldn't, you know, it's not easy. Hitting between its eyes. Yes, actually, the answer is you directly hitting its central point of its head here. You could just raising your hand like this way and I'm at started hitting on hand. It caused a huge damage of the lead shark. Why? Because the central point of its hand is a tour to sending a radio wave and receive the very weak radio wave. And if you attack this receptor on its hand, it creates a huge electric flow and it shock its brain, it shut down the sensor and the hammer hand shot will pass out. This is the way you, you know, you know, you're protecting yourself. You don't need any kind of knife or some tool, just use your hand, arm it and hit it. Okay, don't do it often and don't even try that because you will hurting this shark badly. Okay, um, then we go to the other slide. Here, so what's wrong with the shark screen? What's wrong with it? Here is a, here is a news that told us the Taiwanese people still catching the shark and causing the thing and just throw the body on the beach. It's the true story in the eastern part of Taiwan. Very bad news. And this is the whale shark, very huge size. And its fin is the largest shark fin in the world. So actually this person is a businessman in Hong Kong. He, he, he handing out, he running a restaurant that sells the shark fin soup. And this kind of a size of the shark fin is from the whale shark. Oh, this kind of shark don't even eat fish or shrimp. They eat even smaller plankton in the water. They didn't stop swimming. While they feeding, they opening wild their mouths and let the water flow into its mouth. And they will filter the plankton and center it and swallow it into stomach. And all other seawater, clean seawater, which comes out by its scale. Totally harmless and very big size. Okay, so I want you guys to do some Google for me. Give me the smallest size of a shark and the largest size of the shark. Give me your number. 我现在要你们去Google一些鲨鱼的相关资讯,你告诉我最小的鲨鱼的尺寸跟最大的鲨鱼的尺寸,然后type in the message box. Yeah,前中 you are right, the smallest will be 16 centimeter, only this one. Very tiny. And the biggest one? Uh, actually, the biggest one is bigger than 14 meter. The biggest size of the shark is this kind of species. It's whale shark. Anyone want to try? 20 centimeter? No, no, 20 meters is small, smaller. Actually, the whale shark can be as long as 20 meter. The record, the biggest record we, we did, we find is 20 meter. The biggest shark in the whole world is this kind, the whale shark. 三十厘米是不对的哦。梦神最小的是大概十六公分左右。哦，侏儒鲨鱼，哦，最大的大概是二十公尺左右，是金鲨，就是这种。Okay, we'll keep moving on. Once you eat shark fin, there are three kind of different things you should realize. One is called the bio concentration. If you live longer, you eat a lot of things. Your body have a higher toxic concentration. 
So if you eat a shark, that could survive more than 30 years. Imagine how much toxic in its body. Okay, if you could, if you eat a fish that only living for two years, the toxin concentration will be much lower. Okay, so you eat a fish that is very small, for example, a shark, it can live for 30 years, its body toxin concentration is very high. This is called the toxic exposure effect. Bio concentration. Then, if you eat a fish that can live for two years, its body toxin is very short. Its body toxin will be less. Okay, the second point. Second point is bio accumulation. If they live longer, so they will have eat more food. So those toxins transferred from the food chain will accumulate more in their body. For human, we're living for average 80 years or 85 years old. So within these 80 years, we eat a lot of different food wildly from the mountain to the sea. We almost eat everything. So all the toxic, all the different poison things in different creatures' body, we are all transferred into our body. Some toxic will be digested and released by your loops or poo, but some will accumulate in your body, basically in the body fat. Okay, the third point is so-called biomigration. Hey, I am a shark. I want to eat 10 swordfish in my whole life. I'm a swordfish. I will eat maybe 1,000 of tuna in my life. And in tuna, we'll eat some middle-sized fish. And the middle-sized fish will eat smaller-sized fish. This kind of a toxic will be migrated between creature to other creature to other creature. And if we eat the shark, they are on the top of a food chain, biological chain. Okay, they are on the top. So they already have the, the highest toxic concentration, the highest bio accumulations, and they migrated lots and lots of different kinds of toxic from different species and the concentrate kept in its body. And you want to cut its fin and to cook a bowl of soap. Let's say it's a terrible idea, right? You could swallow a lot of unknown toxic. Okay. And anyone could tell me what kind of fish this is. Yeah, Fan Che Yu, good job. Actually, if the formal name, formal Chinese name will be Fan Che Tun. It's a kind of fish. Some fish. Okay. Use some fish to search pictures. Use Google picture, search it. Use this sun fish, this keyword, to search in Google, come on. Using a common English name to search, make mistake. Here is a light water fish. Also have a sunfish, long ear sunfish. Okay, and this one is the other type so-called giant upper sunfish. But once we saw the video, you can see that in Japan's trade market, they try to sell this kind of sunfish. They, they are very familiar to caught it. This is not like the sunfish we want to mention, right? So, okay, here, 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 here. Let's we'll try to call it the fish. And I wanted to remember it's the weird gray blue color on its skin and the red fin and huge eyes. And here is, seems like a lot of things stuff in here, right? Okay, if you Google the YouTube, YouTube and then watch some video, the title of video, this video says it's a giant sunfish in in chinese is fan chou yu but actually it's a wrong title mm. this kind of sunfish we don't use the common english name so actually 
more formal names of this fish will be ocean sunfish with an ocean inside okay ocean sunfish and the other video i want to show you about this creature sunfish and actually in chinese we call it moonfish you may think the whole or all kind of the fish is cold blood right but actually this sunfish this typically creature is warm blood his body temperature could be as high as 35 circus degree we are right they're warm blood we, we, we normally think all the fish is cold blood but this one is warm blood and here is another video a fisherman try to caught this fish this sunfish and separate its muscle i won't watch the video can we use this as a stir fry you can you can see most of the body most of the muscle is light pink color but he is going to cut the other part here we're going to make this like a frisbee cut you see it cut here this part we're going to bring it right around you just get your finger okay open it up a little bit you see how thick it is we're going to cut it right here and basically i'm just going to run my fingers around in a circle and we're going to pull the cap off i'm going to take my knife and i'm going to dig into the chest cavity I'll bring it around and then i'm going to get my hand in there we're going to lift this up and out i know it's a little bit disgusting but okay compare the color in different part of his body here here the muscle in it's a pectoral fin, shong qi. Okay, it's a scientific vocabulary, so you have to pronounce it correctly. Pectoral, pectoral fin, shong qi. This muscle here is much darker color, right? Which means this muscle filled with blood, a lot of blood inside, blood tumor inside. The blood circle running very fast. So this fish can swim in a high speed according to the shape of its fin. And you know, with a long fin here, and the body shape makes it could swim very fast. And once they speed up, they wave fin, their petrol fin very fast, very fast. And once the muscle moving very fast creates some kind of warm blood and this blood flows to the heart of this fish which keeps all the body in higher temperature which creates higher speed of metabolism so they could having better reaction better eyesight better brain thinking become smarter so they can chase their prey better. Okay, 这这一条鳄鱼的胸鳍这边的肌肉的颜色明显的比身上其他的肌肉颜色深很多，那是因为它里面有很高亮的血液。然后当他们在快速往前游动的时候，他们要追逐猎物的时候呢，他们会很高速的拍这个胸鳍，一直拍，一直拍，一直拍。然后这个肌肉就会不停的收缩，然后这肌肉收缩的时候会产生热能。那把这一块肌肉里面的所有的血液加热，加热之后流到他的心脏里面，然后心脏的血液变得比较热了之后，打出去的血液到全身的每一个地方的时候，它都会比较高温，然后在比较高温的情况下，它的新陈代谢会比较快，然后新陈代谢比较快的情况下，它看就比较远，看得比较清楚，思考也会比较清楚，然后更能够有快速的反应，这样他们比较容易捕到猎物。Okay, this is the, the, the characteristic of a sunfish. So this is a sunfish. 
And what do we want to talk today is ocean sunfish. It has another very cute name called Mola Mola. It's interesting. You can see the shape of this fish like with no tail. No tail. It was like it was fitted by something else and only left half of its body. And it's interesting. It's named so-called Mola Mola. But I want to tell you some truth of this Mola Mola. Anyone could share me your answer. Is Mola Mola swimming fast or slow? Float around? No, they still have something. Maybe according to the information I tell you about the shark scales, and you think this shape, yes, they have some, they seem like they have some kind of turtle on their body. Yes, maybe the water flow through its body will be very smooth. But no, actually, they don't have the tail. They don't have this fin. So they don't have the energy to push them swimming very fast. It is slow. Actually, they can swim very slow. Only very slow. Yes, like Kai Le says, most of the time they just float underwater. Okay. And I want you guys to search some information about ocean sunfish. And I want to know that we have five different kind of uh, ocean sunfish in this family, in this sunfish, in this mola mola family. Lots of the information that related to ocean sunfish, like how many eggs they can release one time actually it will be 30 million eggs per time per releasing and they could live for about 50 years old or 60 years old even longer and they have a size like a pickup trunk like kind of huge size and they can weight to 3000 kilograms they're very huge size when they fully develop the layer body size, there will be no natural enemy for them. But while they are baby, sea lion will eat it. Sea lion will eat it. And human will eat it. I want you focus on the shape of Mola Mola's mouse. A round circle. You know, they, they, they won't be able to close their mouths. They couldn't close their mouths. So this circle always remained here. Okay? Their tongue will sometimes block the hole, sometimes. So they could not bite. And they could not swim fast. So tell me what they eat. Fish. No. <laughs> Rita, no. Platons? No. Xin Fong, sorry. Wrong answer. Fish lava? No. Jellyfish? Good job. Jessica? Good job. Mola Mola eats jellyfish. Only jellyfish swimming slower than Mola Mola. So it's an easy food that they could catch. Okay, but you know, we have to know some more information about the Mola Mola. Because they look weird. Yes, they look not like normal fish. So we judge it as a weird creature. So the diver are dying to watch the Mola Mola. They want to dive with the Mola Mola. The Mola Mola is such a huge size and a human could even... The tongue is ugly. As hell, Tommy is trying to describe himself. I already told you, no creature is ugly. They are unique. Okay, you can see the size compared with the human. How big could the mola mola be? Once they fully develop it, their body size, it can be so huge. Okay, and the other truth I want to let you know is. 
Mola Mola do have some migration paths to the east part of Taiwan. In foreign country, the diver will spend about 150 US dollar to go diving once for about 50 minutes with Mola Mola. If you want to go dive with Mola Mola, 50 minutes, it costs you 150 US dollar in average. But in Taiwan, we didn't dive with the Mola Mola because the Mola Mola migrated from the east part of Taiwan. They go directly to the Japan and the Korean and go back. During the migration, they are young. Their size is not as big as their adult. Yes, adults will swim with them, will migration, will, will do the migration with the young one. But now in Taiwan, in the east part of Taiwan, we could catch Mola Mola from April till June. Lately, like to travel, like to migrate it from the east part of Taiwan. But the diver could not go to the east part of Taiwan because the water dips is about 1,000 meter deep. It's not able, and we do have a current in the east part. You will not be able to swim with the Mola Mola. But the fishermen, fishermen, they could only catch the Mola Mola during the April to May. So it's the major things they catched. And here I want to show you a link. This newsletter reported, it. you see, 2015, June 27, they start migration. And they catch this kind of size of Mola Mola. And they catch a lot, a lot, lots, lots of the Mola Mola, lots, lots of the sun, ocean sunfish. But it says about recently, recent 30 years, this is the major one. But they could only have a 60 to 80 centimeter long weight about 30 to 60 kilogram. This is a take, this is a label we could see in the supermarket. It's about 10 centimeter. So this size of ocean sunfish is actually just like an elementary school student. They're very young. They are not even mature. They don't even have the ability to releasing their egg and to regeneration the future. And you know, Taiwanese people just like cold bloodly, bloodlessly murder it and almost kill every each mola mola we can get. And you know what? Mola mola test good? No, it doesn't test good. It's actually test very bad. Traditionally, we didn't eat Mola Mola because its name in Chinese called Fan Che Yu, which means car crash. And in the east part, we have a lot of a bus, we have a lot of a trunk, we have a lot of a cars traveling transporting the resource from the west part to east part. So all the driver of this, this cars will not eat this kind of fish. Because once you eat this fish, it's like a hint that you will have a car crush. So traditionally, we don't eat it. But the people, the fishermen in the east part, during the April or May, they could only catch mola mola. They must sell the mola mola or eat the mola mola. Otherwise, they won't have our food resource. So, the country government in Hualien, they try to make an event to celebrate mola mola and gives a very interesting name of this fish. They renamed it as Mambo fish. Because these fish, while they are swimming, the fin shakes right and left gently, like you are dancing mambo. So we renamed it as a mambo fish. 
with a cute name. And then what we should do is we should invent some delicious food. So if you use mola mola and you search food, you search dishes, you search Chinese food anyway, and you see the pictures. We invent a lot of food from Mola Mola. We eat its muscle, we eat its stomachs. We, we try to create some delicious flavor and use some event to celebrate it, to attract it, the visitor here to eat the Mola Mola. But Mola Mola is not a good food resource. They could not swim fast. Which, they, which means they didn't do the sport, they, they are not athletic. They don't have a strong muscle. All the muscle they had is like this, this one, like a tofu, very soft, very loose. This kind of protein is very easy to rot. You know, once we catch it, once Mola Mola died, Within two hours, if we didn't froze it immediately, their meat were getting very stinky, like ammonia, like the loops, terribly smell. So normally people don't eat it, it's another reason. But if you check the detail in this dish, we use spring onion, we use the sesame oil to, to, die, to seasoning this kind of meat. And the most important things, we have a very high technique, new technique called a uh, organic frozen technique, 超低温冷冻技术, which means we froze those meat immediately. And we equipped this kind of tour in the fish boat. So once we catch the fish, immediately we frozen it in a very low temperature. And once the people want to enjoy it as a food, we defrost it and cook it immediately. So we avoid this stinky problem. Okay, we will use the low temperature technology to the fish and to the fish to the fish. It won't be the same as the fish to the fish to the fish to the fish. 好，所以这个事情是很吊诡的一件事。我们为了要吃它，我们真的是什么事情都做。We we done everything we could, just try to eat mola mola. And here is a protection label of mola mola in sight test. Elsie, less concern. The the creature in here should be like a cockroach. Ex extinct in the Natural, which means dinosaur. Okay. Mola Mola was in non threat, anti, and it goes to vulnerable, this label, different label, within 20 years. And I will explain in depth later. Okay. About the Mola Mola, what we should know, except he has a weird face, according to Tom. Okay. But what they eat, you already answered me, they eat jellyfish. Yes, and they were in the label of non-threat. But now it, is, it goes to a vulnerable, which means easier to be threatened. Who caused this problem? I want all the Chinese students to remember its name, Ocean Sun Fish, and remember the name Mola Mola. Because you know what? If we go to the news, we celebrating, we cut a lot of mola mola. And within 2015, June, the UNC, UICN, they announced that mola mola should be moved from non-threat to vulnerable. And the huge truth is in the whole world, only Taiwanese people celebrate the Mola Mola event 
and only Taiwanese people use mola mola as a major food. In whole world, only three countries eat mola mola, Taiwan, Japan, and the Korea. But Japan and Korea only eat a little bit. They don't like the taste of mola mola, but Taiwanese people know how to cook. We, we see them this, this meat very well, so we eat a lot of it. So you should be proud, right? We eat this creature so much and they remove their protection label from NT to VU. And if we keep it mola mola in this way, I think in the future, in your generation, I'm, I may not be able to see this result, but in your generation, before you died, you may watch Mola Mola be extinguished in wild. It's a terribly truth, okay? And then we're talking about the Mola Mola eat jellyfish. If without Mola Mola, what will happen? Scientific not yet doing the research, doing the whole research, because it's a very huge topic to doing the research. They didn't finish it. They only see some kind of a sign, as I see. So I want to share you another website. These kind of things happened on 2016 or 2017, I forgot. But we go to the website. This is a Japanese fish boat. They throw the fish net into the ocean. And they think, wow, it's so heavy. We have a lot of uh, products to collect it. But all the things they collect it is one typically kind of jellyfish. And this kind of explosion of quantities is normally due to weird natural weather, but also can be some kind of a human effect. This fish is, this jellyfish is named Nomurus jellyfish, Yue Tian Shui Mu. This jellyfish can be grows as long as 20 meter. His finger could be 20 meter long, and the average fingers was covered with the toxic cell that could eject it, a tiny hook to hook small fish and inject the poison into the tiny fish and then slowly pulling back their finger and stalk the tiny fish into the stomach and releasing their hand again to catch it. With less much quantities of a jellyfish in the ocean, all the fish will be killed. So actually now, this website suggests us, we already have not many fish in Japanese ocean. Wow, it's a terrible situation. Human try to fix this problem. So they invent, they, they try to discover, they, they, they create a tour like a fan, like a fan, something like a fan in the ocean. And they turn on the fan and uh, scramble the jellyfish in the ocean. It sounds like a good idea because we totally destroy the structure of a jellyfish and it will die in the ocean, right? It will become the food of other fish or other creatures. But is it a truth? Actually, no. Jellyfish is low level. It's also very old creature, very low level creature. In low level creature, they could produce sperm and apes in a huge quantity. And when will they release their sperm and apes? When they are hurt. 
So once the fan, the, the, the equipment hitting the body, scramble in into a tiny piece, they feel trouble, the, the pressure, and they know they're dying. So all the jellyfish in the ocean release their sperm and eggs together. And then next year, whole ocean was covered by jellyfish, no mura jellyfish. Okay, this jellyfish's name you should know, no mura jellyfish. So what can we do if we want to kill them? We want to remove jellyfish. Jellyfish is with 95% of water in their body, 95%. So actually you catch a jellyfish, it's like you catch a lot of seawater, useless seawater. And if you want to eat it, you will have to find a way to eat it, right? Not easy, totally not easy. But Japanese people is very smart. They try to use it as, a, as the topping of an ice cream and uh, as a topping of a shaved ice, bao bing, to replace the coconut jelly. They use the water to cut the fish and to make it into the topping of the ice cream. They use it to replace the fish and to make it into the topping. In Europe, in the United States, in other Europe countries, they use a different way to create a jellyfish ice cream. So if you check this website, lick it, and it light up. <laughs> you know, they, they use the Florence the protein in the jellyfish and mix with the cream to create this kind of ice cream. This kind of protein, the Florence lightening protein, will be reacted once they, they feel about the pressure change and the, all the contents inside will transform to another chemical form and release the light. So once you lick the ice cream, it's getting lighter and lighter. So you could also check this website, it's interesting and it's very, very expensive ice cream. like. 225 United U, 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 uh, US dollar in one stick of ice cream. Very expensive because it's combined with biotechnology. Okay, don't worry, you will have this link. You will receive this link in my group after this, after this class. Okay, so we will have to stop talking about the Mola Mola right now. So now you already have the whole picture of the Mola Mola you know that it was not in dangerous, but Taiwanese people eat mola mola, catch their child. So we highly eliminate the quantity of this species. And one creature goes down. It's food, jellyfish, the quantity was rising, causing another problem. And we try to solve this problem, but actually, I want to tell you, tell you the way that the Japanese people tried to eliminate the jellyfish is all fail. So they could just let it go two years without catch fish. They import fish. They go to offshore ocean far away from their country to catch the fish and bring it back. And without fish, Without the food resource, all the jellyfish will traveling will move to other direction, other location. So once the jellyfish gone, the fish comes back. Okay, but remember the natural enemy of jellyfish is mola mola. Okay, and we are eating them to death. Okay, we do have another fish. I want to tell you. Uh, this is an interesting fish, but we don't have time. They have an otolith. Otolith is the, the ear stone in their brand. I, I mentioned that some fish was hearing other species by using this kind of fibration of the ear stone in their brand. This is typically fish we had it. In English, we call it drone or crocker. This is the same thing. But it's alien species, it's a local species. There are only two seawater fish was published 
as an invasive species. One is this red worm. The other one is lionfish. But it's a whole different story. And we are out of time. I think I may spend in another 15 minutes in week 16 to talk about lionfish, the story about lionfish. And uh, follows up, we will watch a video named Before the Flute. And um, it should be nice. We will introduce a lot of uh, extinguished animals like a dodo bird and like some kind of a uh, land turtle. And uh, they do have amazing stories. Okay, so any question for today's class? Okay, thank you guys. It's today's class. Having a good weekend. Keep thank you. See you next week. Bye.